Solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Joe learned another way to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. It's a good method and works pretty well, but it's very different from the graphing method, the factoring method, and even the quadratic formula. Because all three of these methods require solving the equation for zero on one side of the equation, for the equation to be in standard form. Completing the square requires just the opposite, to move the c, or constant term, by itself to the other side of the equal sign. That a, for instance, on the left side of the equation, would be moved over to the right side of the equation. So this equation here, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals zero, which we could definitely solve using graphing or the quadratic formula, and maybe even by factoring, has to be transformed from this standard form by moving this positive 8 over to the right side of the equal sign, which is just the opposite of what we did for graphing, factoring, or the quadratic formula. So here we have it, x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. We're going to take a little time exploring what a complete square is using algebra tiles. What we need to create on the left side of the equal sign is called a perfect square or a trinomial square that can be factored into two identical binomials. This is an algebra tile diagram of a perfect square or trinomial square. The big blue square is an x squared. The green rectangles are x's and the yellow squares are 1's. Also we have a, a skinny green rectangle is going to be a negative x. The factors of this square are quantity x plus 2 and quantity x plus 2, here shown on the top and side of the diagram. In completing the square, the things we need to deal with are the x squared term and the x or linear term. The x term that forms this perfect square is 4x. We put two x's here in the upper right of the square and the other two x's of the four x's here in the lower left of the square. In the completing the square method, we need to adjust the left side of the equation to fill in the square created by these x squared and x terms. In this case, four, represented by the four little yellow squares in the lower right of the diagram. Okay, back to the problem at hand. x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. This x term, 6x, needs to be separated into two equal parts, 3x and 3x. Now we're ready to start making the diagram of the square. The x squared a term goes here, then half the 6x's or 3x's go here at the upper right, and the other half the 6x's or 3x's go here at the lower left. Now we can look at the diagram and figure out how many little squares we would need to make this diagram a perfect square. Well, it's a 3 by 3, so we'll take 3 times 3 or 9 of little squares to fill in this square, which is literally completing the square. This tells us that we must add 9 to the left side of the equation to make that left side of the equation a perfect square. And according to the golden rule of algebra, what do we do to one side of the equation? Well, we have to do it to the other side of the equation as well, so we need to add 9 to the right side of the equation as well. So now we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 on the left side of the equation, and negative 8 plus 9 on the right side of the equation. The right side simplifies to 1, so we have x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 1. On the left side, the perfect square trinomial can be written in the factored form as quantity x plus 3 times quantity x plus 3. We can next simplify on the left side to quantity x plus 3 squared, which equals 1. We now are ready to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Our result is that x plus 3 equals plus or minus 1. We solve for x by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation, so x equals negative 3 plus or minus 1. We can write this in set notation as x equals negative 4 and x, e and x equals negative 2. You can and should check your solutions by plugging them back in for the x in the original equation. Let's look at this problem. It's x squared minus 12x minus 54 equals 0. To start completing the square, we move the minus 54 over to the right side of the equation. And here it is transformed to x squared minus 12x equals 54. Next, we take the x term, which is negative 12x, and separate it into two equal parts. Each part is negative 6x. From here, we set up the algebra tile diagram with the x squared term in the upper left corner. We can see the negative 6x's on either side of the x squared term. Then we fill in the numbers to complete the square. These numbers or little squares can only be positive since a positive times positive is positive as well as a negative times a negative. There are 6 by 6 or 36 little 
yellow square tiles that we'll need. This complete square represents quantity x minus 6 times quantity x minus 6. So 36 is added to each side of the equation to get the perfect square on the left side. This simplifies to quantity x minus 6 squared equals 90. The next step is to take the square root of each side of the equation. This simplifies to x minus 6 approximately equals plus or minus 9.5 since the square root of 90 is really an irrational number which is very close to 9.5. Moving the minus 6 to the other side of the equation we have x equals 6 plus or minus 9.5. Separating into two parts we have x equals approximately 6 plus 9.5 and x equals approximately 6 minus 9.5. This simplifies to x approximately equals 15.5 and x approximately equals negative 3.5. And here is our answer in set notation. Joe will complete the square to solve this quadratic equation, x squared plus 2x plus 6 equals 0. The first thing we do is move the 6 over to the right side of the equation where it becomes negative 6. So we have x squared plus 2x equals negative 6. Since we have two x's, we have just one for either side of the x squared algebra tile. Next we complete the square by filling it in with the little squares, in this case just one little yellow square. This tells us we must add one to both sides of the equation to have a perfect square on the left side of the equation. This simplifies to quantity x plus one squared equals negative five. The problem is now that when we take the square root of both sides of the equation, the square root of negative five is not a real number. So there are no real solutions to this quadratic equation. But in case you're going on to find complex numbers as answers, let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides of the equation. We get x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 5. And if we subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, we get 1 minus 1 cancel it equals 0 on the left side of the equation. And defining the square root of negative 1 as i, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus 5i. And these are our complex number solutions. While Joe has pretty well gotten the hang of completing the square, he asked his teacher if there was a quicker way he could do it without having to draw the algebra tile diagrams every time. Let's look at this equation, x squared minus 10x minus 32 equals 0. We take the coefficient of a linear x term, which here is negative 10, and divide it by two equal parts by dividing it in two, which simplifies to negative five. Now we take that number, in this case negative five, and square it. Negative five squared is 25. So 25 is the number that needs to be on the left side to create a perfect square. Now first I forgot to, to take that minus 32 on the left and move it over to the right, so we'll do that right now. So now we have x squared minus 10x equals 32. Now we complete the square by adding 25 to both sides of the equation. So here it is, x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 32 plus 25. The right side of the equation simplifies to 57, so we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 57. On the left side we simplify into the perfect square quantity x minus 5 squared. Now we take the square root of each side of the equation, this becomes x minus 5 equals approximately plus or minus 7.5, which is rounded to the nearest tenth. Moving the negative 5 from the left side over to the right side, this becomes x equals 5 plus or minus 7.5. Now in two parts, this is x equals 12.5 or x equals approximately negative 2.5. And here is the answer in set notation, our final answer. Now we'll look at this problem, x squared minus 3x minus 6 equals 0. Another advantage of using the rule of taking one half of the x term coefficient and squaring instead of building algebra tile diagrams is that you can take an odd number, such as this one, negative 3, and take half of it and square it. To draw an algebra tile diagram, you would need to have even numbered coefficients, but in this case, we have an odd number coefficient, negative 3. This coefficient, negative 3, divided into 2 is negative 1.5 and squaring negative 1.5 we get 2.25 so 2.25 is the number we add to x squared minus 3x to get a perfect square and we can move on from there to find the solutions to this equation adding 6 to both sides of 
our equation, we get x squared minus 3x equals 6. Now adding from our uh, completed square, 2.25 to both sides of the equation, we get x squared minus 3x plus 2.25 equals 6 plus 2.25. And creating perfect square on the left, we have quantity x minus 1.5 squared equals 8.25. Next, take the square root of both sides of the equation. We get x minus 1.5 is approximately equal to plus or minus 2.9. So adding 1.5 to both sides of the equation, we get x is approximately equal to 1.5 plus or minus 2.9. So our solutions are x is approximately equal to negative 1.4 and 4.4, which we box in as our correct answer. Now we'll look at this last problem, x squared plus 10x equals 39. I invite the viewer to stop the lesson and then to work out the problem solving for x, then restart to see if you got it right. This problem first appeared in an algebra book, probably by definition the first ever algebra book because the word algebra first appeared nearly 1200 years ago in the title of this book. The book was written by the Muslim scholar Al-Khwarizmi in Baghdad in what is now currently Iraq. And here his method of solving this equation is shown and illustrated. Al-Khwarizmi did not have the benefit of any of the symbols used to solve this problem, not even the negative numbers or even an equal sign. But in our day we would work out completing the square as shown here. Since we have negative numbers, we have as a solution negative 13 in addition to the solution of 3 found by al Khwarizmi. So our solutions are x equals negative 13 and x equals 3, which we box in as our correct answers. Let's take a look at some of the advantages of completing the square. First, learning to complete the square helps with understanding conics later in the algebra 2 year. We can see that the x minus binomials move the solutions to the right and the x plus binomials move the solutions to the left. Also, the skill of completing the square is very useful in pre-calculus and in calculus. And here are the five different methods of solving quadratic equations that we'll be covering in my series. We have the square root method, solving by factoring, solving by graphing, using the quadratic formula, and completing the square. You may click on any of these others to go to that particular lesson. In addition, there is a solving quadratic equations flowchart that filters you through the different techniques of solving these types of equations. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations by Completing the Square. Thanks for viewing.